Hey, what's going on everybody? Pat Ragnarok here, and I'm going to be talking about something really exciting that came out to North America uh, just yesterday. So I'm going to record this video because I've seen so many people asking how skill inheritance works. Skill inheritance is a new factor that really changes the game for Puzzle and Dragons, where normally I would have to use this team here. I only have these five skills plus my friend's leader or active skill. But now what I can do is I can combine two skills onto any of these cards. Um, the only, actually, yeah, any of these cards. So I want to talk about what skill inheritance really is, what goes into it, some of the drawbacks, and some potential teams that you can actually put together. So Mantastic Pad wrote this awesome guide for skill transfer system and really explains a lot of it. But what I wanted to do was turn this into a video version of this um, as well because it does explain a lot, but I think a lot of people still are going to have questions over and over. So I want people to be able to refer to this video as well as Mantastic Pad's uh, written guide that explains everything. So let's take a look at an example of skill inheritance using the two monsters that Puzzle and Dragons North America put together. So the card here is Awoken Isis, which is a really, really awesome card, very versatile um, for many rainbow teams such as Awoken Ra for Ra Dragon for various reasons. So she has a three-turn cooldown. Now, the way Skill Inheritance works is we can combine any other card that is from the Rare Egg Machine onto Isis. So the example they had was Dark Kali. Now, Dark Kali normally has a full cooldown of seven turns for her active skill the orb transformation. Now with skill inheritance you can use Isis's skill as well as Dark Kali. Now the only stipulation is that they're going to add the cooldowns together. So you're going to have three turns for Awoken Isis to be ready and then when you add that seven to the three now you can use D Kali at ten turns. So if you check out the image below that Mantastic Pad has provided you can see that there's a breakdown of how uh, among those ten turns which skill you can use. So you can use Awoken Isis on turn 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then once that 10th turn hits, you can only use Dark Kali's skill. So at that point, you cannot use Awoken Isis' skill, and you must use Dark Kali's skill. There's no option around that. Now, we'll get into some of the other uh, stipulations of what is going to go into that later, but let's go to the requirements for using this team or to create a skill inheritance monster. You have to have a rarity of 5 stars or higher, which means exclusively REM, and it can be a collab monster, so Batman collab, Superman collab, you can use monsters like that. Final Fantasy collab has a lot of awesome monsters that can be used because they have charge. Almost all of them have charge, I think. Um, you can use lightning skill for Predras. There's a lot, of, a lot of things. We'll get into more about that as well. You have to level 99 that monster, so they have to be the max level uh, to be able to use them. All of their Awoken skills, not including Latents, have to be included. So if they have three, um, three Awakenings, then that's all you need. If they have nine Awakenings, you have to have those nine Tamadras for those. And then the monster must have come from the Rare Egg Machine, as I mentioned earlier. So those are the only requirements. So that being said, I can put any Rare Egg Machine monster onto any of these monsters. So while Chocobo is not a Rare Egg Machine monster, I can still keep him on my team if I'd like and put another skill on him. For example, I can put Isis on his skill. So the way that would work is I would be able to use Gissel Greens at 10 turns, and then you add the three from Isis. So on 10th turn, I can use Chocobo, 11th turn, Chocobo, 12th turn, Chocobo, and then the 13th turn, I cannot use Chocobo, but now I can use Awoken Isis. So now that we understand what skill inheritance is and the power that it can have, uh, how exactly do you go about getting it? So the way that you can fuse two monsters together is go to the purchase monster option and you want to buy these tans. So flame tan, bug tan, just like the wood peas uh, and bad peas, they are specific to a color and you have to have four of them in order to skill inheritance uh, any one monster to another. In addition, um, you have to spend about two million coins and I'm not sure if it varies or if it's specific to two million coins for every single transfusion, but it does require four. Um, sometimes it takes two flame tans and two bug tans, sometimes two shine tans and two wood tans. Uh, you can check it out by looking at the monster itself by going to monsters on the bottom, skill transfer, and then if I want to skill, if I want to select Yamada for example, I can now see that of the available monsters, one being with this gold star here, uh, Famiel, you can see that I need a two blue, uh, two bub tans, and then two shine tans. So that means that it's going to cost me 100,000 MP, 
Or, if I want to get tans, I can do the special dungeon called the Tan Infestation. So that is actually available today. So de definitely check out PadX for your guide to be able to see what time uh, your dungeon is. Uh, because it's such an important dungeon, I've actually set a timer for myself because I don't want to miss it because it's at midnight for me. Um, so I, I have not been able to play around with them myself and make some teams, but I do want to talk about some theories and what you can put together and what the best teams can be. So some things to consider when you're putting together uh, a monster to skill inherit to another one. You want to think about what type of active they're bringing to the party. So are they doing gravity? Are they doing damage reduction? Uh, such as Indra or um, Indra or Kushinata, and gravity being Sakuya or uh, Hades, is that going to help your team out? Is it really beneficial? And is the advanced cooldown going to be worth it? So if you're adding a Sakuya who has a 15 turn cooldown, and you're already adding it to a monster who has 10 turns, it's not going to take 25 turns to be able to use that Sakuya gravity. So is that worth it for your team? Uh, in many cases, it can be. Um, if you max skill Sakuya down to 10 turns, that can be a little bit more beneficial. As long as you're not going to use that skill um, and it won't reset, then that's totally fine. Um, are you using a full board changer um, like Kali, Dark Kali? I think that they're going to be really, really popular uh, to be used for skill inheritance. Um, are you looking for damage uh, poisoner? So like Neptune or Lilith. Um, and Lilith, actually, Lilith you cannot use, so for, forget I just said that. Um, Lucifer, uh, Red Odin, any of those will be awesome poisoners that you can add, but they may not necessarily fit on your team. So for example, for my Pandora team, I may want to put Red Odin on this team, but I don't like that he's a main red attribute. So instead, I can just inherit his skill onto, say, Loki, um, Z8, anybody who has a lower cooldown. Um, and I also think that damage enhancements... Delays are awesome, so if you want to deal with creatures but you don't want to put poison on your um, on your cards, a lot of people are inheriting Orochi or Zeta Hydra to your cards so that now you delay the enemy by five turns and you have time to ping down the damage um, for those Predras. Uh, you can also do bind clearing. So for example, Amaterasu, I feel like is on many Saria and Thor teams, but I don't think her awakenings are perfect because she doesn't have any rows, but she's used because you want that bind reduction. So now you can inherit Amaterasu to somebody like Ilm, uh, to somebody like Saria, somebody on that team that you want to be able to um, use for bind reduction. So some considerations that I've had while looking at skill inheritance for my teams um, would be Raw Dragon. For me, this is my team I've used to clear Ultimate Arena. Um, actually, I had uh, Muse on this team, so let me add him in there. Now, there are a lot of uh, difficulties with this team, which is why I don't have a very good clear or success rate. So if I'm playing Ultimate Arena 1, I can die to a lot of different things. One of the biggest one being Skillbind Resistance. So I only have 80% Skillbind Resistance with this team, and my damage output is not as high as I want it to be. So if I'm using Raw Dragon, he has double TPA. That is really strong, but it's not as strong as the damage I was outputting when I used Awoken Sakuya as my lead and Chibi Valkyrie as my sub. So now what I can do is I can get rid of this Chocobo, which is going to sacrifice some HP, but I don't think that's a bad thing. So I can now put Chippy Valkyrie on this team, and because of that, I now have 100% skill bind resistance, which is going to lead to already a higher clear rate for Arena for me. Now in addition to that, I am always getting bound because I have Muse on this team. And the reason I have Muse is because I want to take out Kali because I've had trouble with her. Because uh, she does take off over 20,000 each turn, blind you, what happens if I don't have hearts. There's a lot of uh, annoying, annoying parts there. So what I'm planning to do is keep Awoken Isis, but fuse Muse's skill into her or Valkyrie. I'm not sure exactly who just yet. Maybe even Indra, because I don't use uh, Muse's skill more than twice in Arena. Um, even though it only has a 10 turn cooldown. So I could put it on Chibi Valkyrie or I could put it on Isis, but the point is it's there and I don't have to worry about being bound. So now I've covered not being skill bound, not being uh, regular bound for my monsters, because when Muse was bound, I couldn't trigger anything. And if I didn't have six hearts on the board, I was done. There was nothing I could do. So those runs led to failure for me. In addition to that, now I can take on Arena 2 because of the one simple fact that I was very, very lucky, you guys saw in one of my previous videos, that I pulled Lightning. Now, Lightning 
is a RM card, so she qualifies in every aspect. She's already max awoken. Uh, I just have to get her 50 more levels to level 99 because I did just pull her uh, recently. So I need some more uh, gold infestations uh, to come out soon. Uh, gold dragons. But her skill is so valuable because not only is it a decally skill, but it also deals 10,000 damage to all enemies. And that means that I can take on the Predras in one hit and also have decally skill available. So I do want to get two more skill ups for her. I'm waiting for three times skill to come back. But that is essentially going to be my team. Uh, it's going to look like this with Muse inherited somewhere and Lightning inherited somewhere. Now in addition to that, I can put gravities on this team because I do have about 1,900 uh, Sakuyas down here, and they are almost all max skill thanks to the ranking dungeon. So Sakuya could definitely be awesome because she has a 20% uh, gravity, which could mean that I could just pop one Sakuya for Decali, another Sakuya for Decali, use Muse, and take out um, Decali or take out Cali and Arena on the next turn. So those are some, some potential ideas I have just for my Raw Dragon team. So if I'm looking at my Pandora team, which is another team that I love to use, uh, she has such high HP, but she still has an issue dealing with Predras. So what I can do is I can inherit somebody like Red Odin to this team, because the cooldown is a, it's a little high for Red Odin, um, and mine is not max skill just yet. But over time, I think that that could be a good, um, a good addition here. Because I can't put somebody like Lilith because she's not REM. Even though uh, some users watching this video may have pulled Lilith from an REM a couple years ago when she was in there, um, it does not count anymore. It is only current REM monsters. So with this team, the only real uh, thing I need is poison to be able to take out um, enemies. Now, if I want to, I can take Loki off this team. I can remove him entirely, and then I can have a board changer but inherit Loki's skill to a monster. Because I find I don't use Loki's skill very often. I only really need it for the boss of most dungeons or um, Ultimate Arena's boss. But if I can have another board changer on here, uh, like Haku, um, another full board changer, I could put another Pandora on this team. That would be really awesome for me. In addition, I can get rid of Zuo. Um, because as much as I like Zuo's HP, his RCV is so low, it's, it's zero without any pluses. So if you have Zuo on your Panda team and you don't have pluses, he can be hurting your RCV um, because it is going to be tough to heal up a Pandora team when Zuo uh, kind of... He helps out with the HP, I can't complain there, but the RCV is really tough to make up for. So if you have somebody else that has better RCV, like uh, Dark Valkyrie Claire, she might fit better on this team for you, and then you can always inherit Zeus's, or Zuo's skill onto onto uh, Dark Valkyrie Claire. One of the other things to think about uh, would be adding a full board changer to a team. Uh, for this team, I can put Ronya onto Pandora, for example, because she creates reds and darks, which is perfect for this team. But Ronya herself does not really fit on this team, but her skill is great. Uh, in addition, I can make an orb changer onto Bastet, for example. So a team like this, uh, the only real lack here for Bastet is she doesn't create any any wood orbs. So if I can put somebody like Meimei onto her, for Dandy onto her, uh, Ishida Mitsuhide onto her, then that is going to require, or that's going to allow her to be able to change the full board. And in addition, it doesn't matter whether Bastet's ready or uh, or Meimei is ready on if it's inherited to Bastet, because all I have to do is use a skill for Bastet. And if it resets, Bastet has a five turn cooldown anyway. Even if I don't get to the second inherited skill because I keep using Bastet, that's okay because I'm using Bastet. It's already a very strong team, so you can consider that. In addition, I could put more orb changers onto my Ryun team uh, because Ryun, all of these have very strong awakenings, very strong orb changes. But the only missing factor here is maybe I don't like Odin's skills too often. Now, I do have a lot of work to go for Tamadras because I've been, been very busy on this team. But for him, maybe he requires uh, a little bit of help. Maybe I can put somebody else. Or maybe I can put his skill onto uh, somebody with a lower cooldown, like, uh, like Blue Valkyrie, for example. So there have got to be some drawbacks to the system, right? It can't be all positive um, and make the game broken, because then you know, people are going to say it's a little bit too easy. I can just put this skill on that one, and it's perfect, right? So some of the drawbacks are it's expensive. Not only does it cost 2 million coins just for one, now I understand I have 41 million coins here, but I do want to make sure that I have 
a lot of um, a lot of money for fusing pluses and things like that. So it can go really quick if I start fusing a lot of monsters. It's also expensive to buy tans. Tans cost 25,000 MP, which is a lot of pulls uh, from the MP machine or from the RAM machine. So if you were to get somebody rare like Bologna or Eshmali, you can sell her for sure, but not only is that heartbreaking to hear, but um, it's, it's, very, uh, it's, it's very difficult to get the MP without highly purchasing for this. So the, something that does counteract that is the tan infestation, which is just like the Predra infestation. Um, you can spend five stones, run it a bunch of times, and get a lot of tans and just kind of stock up on them. I'm sure that in the future, because we do get things like wood peas and bad peas, we're probably going to be able to get, um, get tans given out just for completing tougher dungeons or uh, maybe even just as gifts in the future. I'm sure that's going to be coming uh, in the future. Now, the other stipulation, if I go back to the original example, if I were to fuse Isis or Decali into Isis, I can no longer have Decali on this spot. So she goes away. So I would not be able to have her. So obviously there's trouble for this team because now I don't have a fire and I don't have a purple. So it makes it kind of tough. And because I don't have a second decali, I can't do that for myself, which is why I like using Muse or somebody else instead, or Lightning instead. But you can't use that monster. Now, it's not like that monster is sold and gone forever. It just sits in your box. You can still fuse materials into it and skill it up and everything, but you cannot use it on your team. So now I have this blank spot, even though decali skill is on Isis. So also, if I want to reverse it, Everything's reversible. I can get my decali back. I can use her in this team, um, and, and then the skill inheritance goes away for Isis. However, I don't get that 2 million gold back, and I don't get those 4 tans back. So you got to think about the investment that's going to go into this, if you do change your mind. If you're so sure about what you want to do, definitely go for it. But all, I'm gonna, all I want to say is definitely consider and then reconsider because it is going to be expensive. And if you're not IAP, which means you don't make in-ad purchases, then you definitely want to think maybe even a third time because it, it can, not that people can't use this without spending money, but it does become difficult um, if you want to do a lot of it. And then all of a sudden you find, oh, that was a bad idea. Now I have to reverse it. You know, it's just that much harder for you. I also did want to touch on the fact that you can use skill inheritance in some senses, not every time. I wouldn't rely 100% on it, but you can use it to block those pesky skill delays. So, Recently, uh, the MP store has allowed you to buy uh, skill delays for 30,000 MP, but it was half cost for the last event. I'm sure they're going to be doing that more in the future, but if you wanted to use skill inheritance to your advantage, let's use an example that Isis has decali again as her sub. So remember that the third turn, Isis can be used all the way up to the ninth turn. Now on that tenth turn, when decali skill is ready to be used, let's say you're fighting somebody who uh, delays your turns by two. So let's say you're fighting Yord in your Descended, and her first move when you get to the boss is to delay all of your skills by two turns. Now, Decali cannot be used because it's going to set your turns back by two, but if you want, um, you can have Isis available. So use that to your advantage however you want to use skills together. Maybe it's Decali with another Decali, for example. Uh, I wouldn't do that, but you, you can. So if you had Decali with another Decali and <clears throat> one Decali is uh, skill bind or skill delayed, then at that point you still have the other Decali skill available. Now, instead of fusing two decalis together, I would definitely recommend getting skill delay resists over that, just because the cost is going to be so much cheaper, um, but just wanted to use that as an example. So let's recap what is going into skill inheritance. Skill inheritance requires a rarity monster of five stars or more, which means they have to come from the rare egg machine or a collab rare egg machine. They have to be max level, which is 99. They have to have all of their Awoken skills active. This does not include latents, only the actives on the right side of any monster. And to be able to use skill inheritance in the first place, you have to have four monsters called Tans of varying colors, which you can get from the MP store or from Tan Infestation. And the drawbacks to using the skill inheritance system is it's very expensive, lots of coins and lots of Tans. Um, if you're not planning on spending MP on them, you are going to be spending stones restoring stamina to be able to run tan infestation over and over. You cannot use the sub once they've been fused to that monster, and then removing them does not give you back the tan or the, uh, or the money that you spent on them. So hopefully you guys all learned a little bit more about how skill inheritance works. Um, unfortunately, there is no specific science 
Um, the suggestions I made today, somebody else can make another suggestion and they're perfectly going to be okay. Um, as long as you consider that the cooldown is going to be added together and it's going to be tougher to activate both skills. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you so much to Mantastic Pat for writing that awesome written article. Uh, hopefully this video helps to complement that uh, article that you put together. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you like what you saw uh, to be able to see more information. Also be able to follow on Twitter and Instagram at Pad Ragnarok. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.